The accumulation of plastic debris has been a major environmental concern for decades. And as shown in the image, these plastics break up into smaller pieces and are referred to as microplastics or MPs. Good day, everyone. I'm Cherry Gorgonio, and I will be sharing my graduate research on microplastics in river and aquaculture pond sediments of the Marilao Mikawayan Obando River System in Bulacan, Philippines. As this presentation focuses on freshwater MPs, I will be providing a brief background on MPs and how these became a threat to aquatic ecosystems. Then I will also tell you about how these MPs were sampled, quantified, and characterized in the study. And lastly, I will be sharing key takeaways, which include significant findings, as well as subsequent plans and recommendations. First off, microplastics can either be primary or secondary. Primary MPs consist of manufactured plastics that are microscopic or small sized, such as microbeads in cosmetic products or industrial pellets. Whereas the secondary MPs are fibers and fragments of plastics derived from the breakdown of larger plastic items. MPs come in a variety of sizes, shapes, colors, and polymer types. MP sizes range from one micrometer to five millimeters, and they can be further classified into small MPs, which are less than one millimeter, and large MPs, which range from one millimeter to five millimeters. In terms of shape, MPs can take the following forms, spheres or pellets, which are hard rounded particles, films, which are thin planes of flimsy plastic, fragments, those that are hard with jagged outline, fibers, which are thin fibers or straight plastics, and foam, which is lightweight and sponge-like. MPs are also described according to their colors, ranging from vivid colors like red, blue, down to pale colors and also white colors. MPs can be categorized according to polymer type. The most common polymers found in the environment are the polypropylene or PP, high and low density polyethylene or HDLDPE, polyethylene terephthalate or PET, uh, polyvinyl chloride or PVC, you have your polyamide fibers or nylon, you have your polystyrene or PS. There are many more polymers and all these are determined by subjecting the particle through Fourier Transformed Infrared Spectroscopy or FTIR. Overall, these MP characteristics can provide essential information as to the possible impacts and sources of the microplastics. Fourier studies have demonstrated that MPs were ingested by aquatic organisms and that ingested MPs caused physical and toxic harm. MPs are known vectors as well for contaminants, pollutants, and pathogens. Because of these, microplastics or MPs are considered a threat in freshwater ecosystems. Additionally, because of their bioaccumulation potential, which also increases with decreasing size. The accumulation of MPs is a serious problem for both marine and freshwater ecosystems. For the latter, massive efforts have been underway to fill the knowledge gaps, but published work that focus on freshwater MPs are few in the Philippines. This study aims to provide the very much needed base, baseline evidence on MPs in a freshwater system in the country, that is your Marilao Mikawain Obando River system, which is an important freshwater system to Bola Kenyas. The evidence that I refer to includes presence, quantity, and characteristics of MPs, all of which could be a benchmark for further studies. Subsequently, such scientific data may be used to justify appropriate policies and mitigating measures needed to protect the river system. So this study was conducted in Bulacan, Philippines, specifically in the MMORS or your Marilao Mikawayan Obando River System. There were four stations sampled for sediments, two located along the river, namely River Sta 1 and 2, and another two stations within aquaculture ponds you have your aqua pool one and two. In each station, three samples were obtained at about 100 meters away from each other. We were interested in sediments because these serve as a good representation of long-term MP accumulation. Using an Ekman grab, surface sediments were collected along the river stations and from aquaculture pond stations. In the lab, the samples were open dried, were subjected to sieving, 
density separation or flotation using sodium iodide, and then filtration. MPs were documented under Leica EZ3.40 stereo microscope and then described in terms of size, shape, and color. And also, all quantities were recorded. Lastly, polymer types of 24 selected MPs were determined using FTIR or Fourier Transform Infrared Spectroscopy at DOST Tagig Laboratory. So in this study, MPs were evident in all sediment samples with a total of 1,585 particles isolated. Overall, a higher abundance of microplastics were found in river sediments with, with a mean abundance of 78 particles per kilogram then the aquaculture pond sediments with mean at only 50, 54 particles per kilogram. Compared with other studies involving surface sediments of rivers, these figures are relatively lower. The high MP abundance in river sediments could be attributed to the larger long stretch river that is exposed to various human impacts compared to the dike or enclosed aquaculture ponds. On the other hand, the presence of MPs in the aquaculture ponds could be attributed to its water supply and or the various activities and practices being made by the owners or households around the ponds. The water from the river is being used as well to supply the selected, selected aquaculture ponds. And given the water quality and flooding events along the MMORS, it is possible that plastics could have been introduced to the aquaculture ponds. Furthermore, regulatory agencies such as Bureau of Fisheries and Agriculture, or BFAR, provides technical training on best aquaculture practices, and this could possibly contribute to the lower MP abundance in pond, in pond sediments. Studies have shown the positive correlation between anthropogenic activities and MP abundance. In addition, the mismanagement of solid waste can cause plastics to be discharged directly into the river, resulting in these water systems to serve as conduits of plastics to the oceans. Moreover, because river water has a lower density than seawater, it is likely that plastics undergo sedimentations, sedimentation while being transported. In all stations, it was evident that the larger sized MPs, which range from one to five millimeters, consistently outnumbered the smaller MPs. This distribution of MP size can be related to the sources of microplastics and might also reflect the source's degree of degradation. Several studies have pointed out that physical abrasion, biological activities, and chemical processes in the environment enhance physical and chemical degradation of plastics and can shift the particle size distribution as time passes. It is important to remember that first, the size of MPs poses a potential threat to aquatic organisms that ingest them. And second, there is an inverse relationship between MP size and bioavailability. Further, due to the greater surface area of MPs, whether small or large MPs, the adsorption of pollutants is possible. Here are examples of MPs found in the sediments, all viewed under a stereo zoom microscope. Images A and B are fragments. Image C is a fiber, image D is a film, image E is a pellet, and image F is a foam. Fragments were recorded to be the most abundant MP shape, which was observed in all stations. Fibers followed, then film, foam, and pellets. This observed dominance of fragments is consistent with reports in other literature. The abundance of fragments could also provide an explanation as to why large MPs were abundant compared to small MPs. Because unlike other MP shapes, fragments are formed from the breakdown of denser polymers, which takes a little longer time to degrade into the micro size. MP shapes may provide clues on their possible sources, and the dominance of fragments, fibers, and film in the river and pond sediment suggests that. The main driver of MP pollution is plastic solid wastes. Residential wastewater and degradation of fishing lines and nets used within the aquaculture ponds could be the possible sources of fibers. The presence of film could be potentially from the breakdown of 
uh, plastic bags that get stuck into the waterways and are slowly being degraded and released into the environment in the form of MPs. The degradation of plastic, fish boxes, floats, and foam food containers could be the possible sources of foam MPs. Lastly, pellets are used in plastic and automobile industries and in personal products. Thus, domestic and industrial influence are the possible sources of these MPs. Colored MPs were abundant compared to MPs with white and dirty white colors. This observation is again consistent with other freshwater set studies. Colored plastic products are widely produced nowadays to increase the aesthetic value of plastic packages and containers. The degradation of such colored sources could explain the abundance of colored MPs in the samples. Moreover, studies have postulated that colored MPs were more likely to be ingested by aquatic organisms because they resemble their food. These aspects deserves attention in future research. Moving forward, FTIR analysis in 24 randomly selected MP particles revealed abundance of polyethylene terephthalate or PET polymers, followed by polyethylene or PE, polypropylene or PP, polystyrene or PS, polyvinyl chloride or PVC, and 8% were plastic additives and 4% were non-plastic. The abundance of PET could be attributed to its density. And also, it is not surprising that polyethylene, polypropylene, and polystyrene were also detected in the samples because these materials account for the largest portion of global class plastic production due to its numerous uses and high demand from consumers. Polyvinyl chloride is rarely reported and observed in lesser quantities or frequencies compared with other polymers because PVC polymers are often used in items that last for several years. Unlike PET, PE, PP, or PS, which all serve as major components for most of the single-use plastics with short life cycles. Just a note, plastic polymers may pose a hazard due to the release of its constituent polymers and additives. The presence of these MP polymers and the possible release and absorption of toxic chemicals and other pollutants can potentially increase its risk to aquatic organisms and to the freshwater system. So in summary, these findings suggest that MPs have indeed accumulated in the sediments of the Marilao Mekawain Obando River system and nearby aquaculture ponds. We found out that river sediments harbored a higher abundance of MP particles than in the ponds, although the figures were reported uh, although the figures we reported are relatively lower compared with other literatures. Our description of MPs point to various sources, and these are first, solid plastic waste, such as, as the solid plastic waste as the largest contributor to MPs, which we gauge from the abundance of large size fragments over small sized MPs, presence of more vibrant colors over white and dirty white MPs, and the polymer PET. Second, Household waste water and fishing implements, which contributed to MP fibers. Third, MP foam particles that originated from degrading fishing and food containers. And fourth, domestic industrial influence, which, can, which are sources of your pellets. Most of these MPs are potential vectors of pathogens, toxic pollutants, and other contaminants, which may have physiological effects to benthic aquatic organisms. We suggest that these baseline evidence be followed through during monitoring of river water and sediment quality. Specifically, we recommend including MP abundance and characteristics in monitoring reports. And when possible, baseline evidence could also be obtained from other areas of the river system. Results from this study may be used to inform stakeholders of the status of the MMORS in terms of presence of MPs and further to intensify cleanup and communication drives for the river system since it is a high priority water quality management area. Thank you very much for listening to this scientific contribution. Should you have any questions, kindly send an email to magorgonio at up.edu.ph. Thank you.